What's up, YouTube? It smells like Vin here, and uh, I'm excited because I am going to be doing my first review. Uh, uh, <laughs> in months. It's been a very, very, very long time since I've done a review. Uh, so please excuse me if I'm rusty. I'm going to be. Also, uh, I've been up for a full 24 hours. I'm not kidding. I, um, I got no, I, I, I'm weird, because sometimes I'll, um, I'll, uh, start this again, I'll, I'll lay in my bed, and I'll, you know, watch YouTube videos or something like that, and I just don't feel tired, I don't, I don't feel like I want to go to bed, and as the hours go by, or the sun, like four o'clock rolls by, I'm still up, and my brother gets up for work, and then I get up with him, and, and that's it, and then I'm up for the whole day, uh, and I know I'm going to take a nap later, uh, so I'm tired. So, um, excuse me if I'm a little, like, kind of hazy and all, like, out of it, uh, but the funny thing is that I'm actually going to be doing, um, a review of an album by a band that I left off last time. As in, I reviewed Monster Magnets, Super Judge in January, or oh, somewhere around there, which is a while ago, man. I can't believe I haven't uploaded, or, uh, well, I haven't uploaded a review in that long. That's a very long time to not have a video up of a review, seeing as how it's my main feature of the channel. Although I'd say my blogs have a certain authority as well. Did I say blogs? I meant vlogs. Um... Maybe I did say Fox. Whatever. Dopes to Infinity uh, by Monster Bang. It released 1995. Now, um... Uh, Dopes to Infinity is Monster Magnet's third release, and it is classic. And it is, um... a bit more refined than their previous uh, records. Spine of God and Super Judge. Um... Sorry. It's a beautiful day out, so I wanted to do the review outside, but, you know, I'm kind of trying to make sure no one's listening to me, because it's kind of weird. Um, Spine of God and Super Judge were very psychedelic records, very heavy records, very cutthroat records. They they did have some chill songs on them, but for the most part, uh, they were mostly um, loud, kind of somewhat aggressive, I would say while still retaining a spacey kind of kind of sound to them. Dopes to Infinity, on the other hand, is a lot more refined. It's not as balls to the wall as uh, Super Judge and uh, Spine of God was, because those records do have a bit of a punkiness to them. If you listen to them, they are, you know, Dave Windorf uh, has said many times that he has, he has a Stooges influence and MC5. And that's like the classic proto-punk type thing, which I love. And uh, that influence is very apparent on uh, Spine of God and Super Judge. Whereas, uh, it was still psychedelic, but, but kind of punkish. Um, again, it's an understated influence, but it's there, and it, it gives the records um, a bit more of a attack to them. Whereas, Dopes to Infinity, it's still, you know, heavy, it's still whiff oriented but it's a lot cleaner. It's a lot um, more polished. The production's a lot cleaner. Uh, structurally, the songs, whereas on Super Judge and Spine of God, they're more jam influenced. You know, if you take a song like um, uh, what is it? Pill Shovel. Pill Shovel off uh, uh, Spine of God's the opener. Um, that really just kind of, it's it's a, a verse, and then another verse, and then a jam. Dopes to Infinity takes the band into a more structural territory, verse, chorus, bridge, and it just refines the approach of their kind of psychedelic, crazy, spacey madness. So, uh, yeah. First, I guess I might as well talk about the sound on the record a bit more. Um, it kind of blends Sabbath heavy whiffs with Hawkwind type space rock. And 
if that sounds good to you, like it does me, then you're gonna like this record. Um, it is very, uh, psychedelic. But the thing about it is that, whereas on the previous records, it was more, uh, just focused on the guitar, this record has a lot of more textures. If you take uh, my favorite song off the record, um, Look to Your Orb for the Warning, which is not only my favorite song off the record, my favorite Monster Magnet song, but just one of my favorite songs in general. I love that song so much. Uh, the chorus, you know, The Old Man is Down by the River, uh, has a, a backing track of... Uh, I don't want to say synthesizers, because they're not synths, but um, more orchestral kind of sounding stuff. Um, and, and that kind of carries on through the rest of the record. There's a lot of sounds that are not produced by just guitar, bass, drums. And that's great, and that's cool, because uh, it doesn't over, override the, the heavy whiffs that Ed Mundell and Dave Windorf have, um, but it adds a layer of texture and a layer of, of sound that is, that, you know, was missing from, uh, the band's previous records, and that's not to say that the previous records were lacking, because I love them just as much, but in a different way, um, so, uh, like I said, the song structures are a lot more, um, simple. Um, you take a song like uh, Dopes to Infinity, Intro, Verse, Chorus, Interlude, Solo, whatever. Um, this is a good thing though. Again, I love what the band did on the previous records where they kind of just jammed um, while still having structure the songs. Don't get me wrong, not every song was a big jam fest, but um, a, a, a good few of them were. And so the, 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 the kind of newfound structure that the band has on uh, Dopes to Infinity is a is a nice change to the band's sound, and it, like I said, it just kind of further refines the psychedelic spaciness that the band already had. Um, the performance on this record is great. Uh, Ed Mundell is a fantastic guitarist. Just great tone, crunchy, heavy guitar tone, while still being clear enough to hear the amazing whiffs, very fuzzy, um, his solo tone, as in the tone that he uses when he does more lead work, um, cause he is the lead guitar player, um, on this record, um, I think they got another guitarist, uh, doing Power Trip, which is the next record, um, very, very high-pitched lead tone, um, very wah-wah, you know, very, uh, cosmic sounding, and it just helps further push, uh, that spacey feel that Dopes to Infinity has, um, uh, the drum work is fantastic, the drummer's name is slipping my mind, uh, right now, so I apologize, but he's a great drummer, groovy, uh, just in the mix enough where he can be heard, but not overpowering the guitars or bass, the bass is very prevalent, um, we'll get more to that when we go into production. Um, so, that's great, um, another thing I like about the record is that it, it is very, uh, has a lot of variety, um, you take a song like, you know, uh, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, it's still spacey, still trippy, but very, very, um, catchy, very hook-laden, you know, it was a, a relative hit for the band, um, you know, great wah-wah intro for, Neg you know, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, um, and then you get a song like All Friends in Kingdom Come, a lot more abstract, a lot more, uh, textual, very, very layered, there's a lot of things going on, there's a lot of different sounds that you can kind of discern, and, um, it's just a very deep listen, whereas a song like Negasonic Teenage Warhead, Dopes to Infinity, um, King of Mars, you know, they're very direct, and, you know, to get a song like Third, Third Alternative, 
right before Kings of Mars gives the record a great flow, and we're gonna get into that when I talk about flow. So, uh, the production on the record's great. Like I said, guitar tone's fantastic. Uh, everything is very upfront, but not kind of taking over any other instruments. The bass is, is very upfront, you can hear it, but it's not too upfront. It's a nice, warm, thin bass tone that fits the record very well. Um, drums sound great. Uh, Dave Windorf's vocals are right, perfect in the mix. Um, but really, I think Monster Man didn't have a He's had really good production. They've never really had a bad production job, I don't think. Um, uh, the flow of the record, like I said, is great. Each song, it, it flows literally into the next song. So, like, the ending of one song will morph into the intro of the next song. Uh, and that's great because it gives the record a kind of continuity um, that I feel the previous... Monster Magnet records, although they had very good flow, lack. This record kind of feels like it's just one big song, you know what I mean? Like it's just kind of one uninterrupted flow of just music, and that's great. And it gives it an experience kind of vibe when you listen to it. You tend to take the songs as just one big thing, one big unit and entity, rather than this song and this song and this song. Uh, and that makes it a very enjoyable listen, you know, a record to listen to from um, front to back, and it's great. So the flow is great. Uh, Dave Windorf's lyrics are fantastic. Um, really, really weird, abstract, like always, but always kind of having a bit of relatability to them almost. I feel like Monster Magnet lyrics are very good lyrics to interpret yourself and kind of give your own meaning to them. Um, as to what you think they mean, and I always love that when a band kind of has lyrics that I can inject my own thought process into, and my own, um, you know, ideas into what they mean, and my own interpretations, so lyrics are fantastic, Dave Wendorf's always been a great lyricist. Um, another thing I like about this record is that the sound is a bit more upbeat, um, it's a bit more of a feel-good kind of rock record, um, Whereas the previous two Monster Magnet records uh, and EPs, you know, um, pretty much the whole body of work for this was very um, chaotic. It was very manic. Whereas this record has a lot of emotion, I feel, weaved into it. The songs have more emotional depth to them, and the flow kind of gives it this up and down feeling, which I think gives it a, a further uh, emotional depth than the previous uh, Monster Magnet LPs. Um, some highlights for me are many. I really enjoy every song off of it. Um, the album has two instrumentals as well. Um, Ego, The Living Planet, and um, uh, Master or Theme from the Master Burner. I personally like the, uh, the latter better. Uh, theme from the Master Burner has a great riff, great intro very, very, um, kind of progressive in its structure, very cool. Uh, Evil the Living Planet is very cool, too, it's based off of a Marvel comic, uh, character, which is great. You know, Dave Windorf loves comics, um, well, you don't know that, maybe you do, I'm telling you, though. Um, so, it's good, but it would actually be my pick for the weakest song on the record, um, just doing part by, uh, it's kind of noisy, and it's kind of, uh, uh, repetitive. And, again, that's fine, and I think it's a great song, but I just think, um, it doesn't hold my interest as much as the other songs, but it, it does have a place on the record. It's, it's not like I wish it wasn't there, um, and it is a nice, um, don't want to be leaving my lighter out here, it is a nice, um, instrumental to kind of uh, bridge two songs together. Um, yeah, I mean, Dopes to Infinity, it's a classic. I love it. Um, it. It really, I think, kind of propelled Monster Magnet into uh, a different stratosphere. You know, with the previous records, they, they kind of proved that they could make really, really, really good rock music, psychedelic space rock. Uh, and it was great. You know, I loved, loved, loved Spine of God and Super Judge. 
the dopes to infinity in my opinion just takes it a step further it, it showed that the band can kind of write progressive uh, you know um, very easy to get into but at the same time not too simple you know what I mean it, they still had a a quality to them that was very trippy very spacey and very out there you know what I mean while at the same time retaining those elements but bringing in a more refined um, approach to the music uh, and that's why I love uh, Dopes to Infinity so uh, I'm not even going to give it a rating I'm kind of not going to give albums ratings anymore they're pretty useless uh, all I can say is it's highly recommended and uh, I would recommend it as a first uh, Monster Magnet LP because it kind of gaps the really really psychedelic stuff with the more uh, kind of mainstream rock stuff that they would do later. It's not bad at all, but um, just different. And I think Dopes to Infinity is a good middle ground. And it's just an amazing record. So, uh, thank you guys very much for listening. It felt good to do a review again on this beautiful, you know, summer morning. Um, tell me what you guys thought. Tell me if you guys like this record. What's your favorite Monster Magnet record? If you haven't heard it, check it out. And I know a lot of people want me to review... Um, the Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness uh, about the Smashing Pumpkins. I have not listened to that record in a while, so once I get around to um, listening to it, I definitely, definitely will uh, review it. So, uh, thanks guys, I'm back, I should be back doing more videos again, and just thanks for, you know, supporting me and leaving me comments and um, being awesome, as always. So, uh, Dopes to Infinity, Monster Magnet, released 1995, check it out if you haven't. And I uh, will see you guys next time. Thanks.